Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and I'm going to tell you this game's with your time and bandwidth. Today's game is Let's Build a Zoo. Friendly animals, trampolines, and genetic splicing await in this casual zoo simulator. Can a zoo consisting only of geese be considered a zoo? Let's Build a Zoo is available on PC, Xbox, Switch, and PlayStation, and is available via Xbox Game Pass. Should you wish to buy it, it'll put you back $15. And the game is about 30 to 40 hours long, you can keep playing it longer should you wish. I personally had everything unlocked at about 35-ish hours. So what exactly is Let's Build a Zoo? Zoo. Well, it's a fairly light zoo management game with a side order of animal husbandry and playing god as you create geese rabbits. You play as a zookeeper in a world that apparently most animals are going extinct due to humans being jerks. Thank goodness that's not actually happening right now in real life. As such, your goals are twofold. Make the best zoo ever and get rich, while also helping repopulate animals and making genetic monstrosities. Zookeeping itself is delightfully light. Animals require certain habitat requirements, which also contain water and enrichment, and sometimes shelter, and that's basically it. You hire staff to keep them fed and cleaned, and you'll need to be careful which animals to choose to mix in your various habitats, but aside from that, keeping animals up and running isn't that challenging. You will also need to build pathways, decorations, food, and drinks for guests, restrooms, and the usual stuff that you get in these type of simulators, but honestly, it's pretty forgiving as well. That is because this is all in service of the game's actual best bits, genetics class. See, if you want a zoo that has more than just rabbits in it, you'll need to trade with other zoos for their animals, but generally what they want is the specific breed of rabbit, or snake, or whatever. In order to make that happen, you'll need to set up a nursery and begin engaging with animal breeding. Yes, like Brock from Pokemon wanted to be. In order to find all of the various variants of each animal type. You can then trade the rare breeds with other zoos to expand your animal collection. Once you have mastered a genome, aka found all of the breeds of an animal, you can start weird sciencing it up by splicing these map genomes together. And you know I have geese rabbits or snake capybaras. What has science wrought? But hey, they're more popular with the guests, so keep it coming. Throughout all of this and the usual park management stuff, there's a morality system that will affect how you play. Being nice to animals, turning in black market traders, and generally caring for planet Earth unlocks good techs off the tech tree, allowing for stuff like wind energy, releasing animals into the wild, and so on. Or you could be a scummy piece of crap and instead sap energy off the power grid, turn your rabbits into rabbit burgers, and basically be a monster. It isn't deep, but it does affect gameplay. And honestly, that is the game. You keep expanding, getting more guests and unlocks, and trying to map every genome so you can finally create the ultimate life form, a giraffe gorilla. So what do I like about Let's Build a Zoo? Well, the game is addicting, mostly because it always has new stuff to unlock and work for throughout its entire 30-ish hours, be it tech, animals, park decorations, or whatever. Additionally, the sub-game of animal genetics and creating hilarious fusion life forms is surprisingly entertaining, and I honestly got sucked more into that than zoo management. And lastly, the game is great and has a charming style, especially with the animals jumping on trampolines, creating insane beasties, and just a general great sense of humor all around. When it comes to the bad, as mentioned, this game is very basic, which I liked for the most part, but if you're looking for something more in-depth, this is not it. On that same note, the game does get a bit samey after a while, as the basic loop never really mixes up all that much once you start genetic splicing, and so it's a lot of doing basically the same thing over and over again for the rest of its 30 hours, which some people might find a bit dull. And lastly, I encountered some really weird bugs. Most around the game notifying me of issues that didn't exist, like animals not having water when they did, staff not being able to get to accessible places, and on the Game Pass version I literally could not get it to run on PC. The footage you're seeing is from the Steam version which I already owned. As you know I rate games on a 3 point scale, must play maybe consider and don't bother. This is definitely a maybe consider, but I also feel it's a bit of a hidden gem. Let's Build the Zoo isn't particularly difficult or overly complex, but honestly I think that's its primary strength. It's more of an animal genetic simulator with the side of zoo management, and I'm okay with that. With its more laid back gameplay experience and some charming visuals and addicting gameplay, this zoo is absolutely worth building. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you played Let's Build the Zoo, please let me know in the comments. Regardless, go out there and give it a shot.